Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics Plus. In this video, let's see how to write a standout resume so that there will be high chances of getting shortlisted for an interview. Let us get in. There are some rules to follow. Your resume will be submitted through an online platform or through LinkedIn or in Naukri will go through an applicant tracking system. So that applicant tracking system will scan your resume and find for keywords which are necessarily required for that particular job role. That's why you need to follow some rules while preparing your resume. The very first thing is you need to use a clear and consistent format for the resume. And you need to put all the details what you have as an educational background and also the experience what you put in a reverse chronological order. Reverse chronological order in the sense, you need to put the recent experience or the recent degree and the recent things first, even the projects. Then you need to keep the resume for one page or maximum for two pages. And also you need to follow a main thing here that you need to keep updated your resume and you need to keep separate resumes for different roles that you apply. Suppose if you take an example of a VLSI job role, you may be applying for the design role, you may be applying for the verification role, you may be applying for the physical design role. Since you are a fresher or less experienced guy, if you are applying for different roles in the same time, you need to keep separate resumes for that particular job role. So you need to modify the profile summary as per the job description. You need to put keywords over there as the job requires. If they are asking for a functional verification engineer, in your profile summary, you need to mention, I have an understanding or experience of functional verification. If they are looking for design verification, you need to put the same keyword in the profile as design verification. Similarly, for the RTL design or FPGA design, you need to use the same keywords over there. Similarly, you need to update the skills with respect to the job. Some jobs require Verilog knowledge. They doesn't require system Verilog UVM. In that case, you are not supposed to put system Verilog UVM even if you know that. You can put Verilog that is sufficient. And if they are asking for Python, Perl, or any TCL scripting, then you need to put those things in skills. Just don't put the skills as they asked, but if you know that skill, then only you need to put. And put the projects only suitable for that particular role. If you are done with three or four projects, that might be on embedded system, that may be on artificial intelligence, don't put those things for a verification or any VLSI role. If you are looking for a VLSI job, you need to put projects only related to VLSI. Specifically, if you're looking for design verification, you need to put projects only on design verification. It means you have to be prepared with project before, then only you need to put it that in the resume. For sure in the interview, you, they will be asking on the projects what you are going to have. These are some standard rules you are supposed to apply in your resume while preparing it and applying for any job role. Now let us get into the sample resume and see how actually it look like and what are all the things you need to put in a order. So here is the sample resume. The very first thing is you need to put your name clearly as per your documents. If you have a surname, if you have a family name, the complete name you need to put it over here. Then the next thing is at the starting your contact number should be visible. It should be a reachable number. If you have two, three numbers, don't put all those. Just put one number over here. Then email ID. Your email ID should be readable. Don't put the date of birth. Don't use the place name like that. Just use your name with that some additional keyword so that email ID should be easily readable. If they want to email you, they should be easily typeable. And then comes LinkedIn profile. This is very, very important. This LinkedIn profile should be matched with the resume what you are providing. At least try to match the skills what you have over here. If the skills and college education and professional summary matches, then there will be high chances of getting interview call. If you go to the LinkedIn, in your profile page at the right side, there will be a profile URL. You can copy that and paste it over here. Then professional summary. This professional summary should tell them what degree you earned if you are a fresher or if you are an experienced candidate, you need to first mention what is the year of experience you have in that particular domain. 
here i have showing you the example of design verification role resume so here i am using system verilog uvm methodologies over here if you are applying for a physical design role or any other rtl designer role then you need to put the keywords related to that and in the jd if they mentioned it as functional verification use functional verification keyword if they have mentioned it as design verification use that keyword over here skilled in test bench development simulation debugging using industry standard tools like eda tools that you need to mention and passionate about ensuring the design quality through the rigorous verification strategies and continuous learning here if you put these lines they will come to know that you will be knowing the domain already what is the role exactly which you are applying for then comes the education here in the education first you need to put the bachelor of engineering or the master of uh, technology whatever you earned and also clearly mention the dates of the degree and you can put a college name or a university name over here with place then you need to put the cgpa or the percentage what you have earned and also if you have a relevant degree like you have if you have completed the diploma you can mention it over here no need to put the 12th rpuc that will be generic that will be not technically relevant to the role what you are applying if you have completed the diploma you can put it over here below the bachelor's of engineering then comes projects this is very important thing you need to put at least two or three projects the first project should be the recent project what you have completed and the second project or the third project will be a prior to that in the project section you need to clearly mention the title of the project don't put only like memory subsystem you need to clearly mention it like design and verification of memory subsystem this is just an example please don't copy this into your resumes just i am showing how actually the title of the project will be something like this design and verification of memory subsystem and when you did it april to june 2025 if it is your academic project you can mention somewhere here that a team number and number of people did this and whatever the role what you played in your project that you need to mention it over here if you have done everything then it is well and good here i shown the example for one who completed this project alone so here in the first point i am just saying how i started my project i created the design document and a verification document for a memory system module which is using verilog it has two memory blocks with a chip select that is what i am saying then we need to say how the design is made and what are all the major functionalities of that then comes a test bench if you are doing a verification project and here you can say i developed a test bench or if you developed only the particular component of uvm or uh, any test bench component you can put it over here clearly or only the test cases if you developed that you can put it over here and tools and languages used in this particular project can be put over here means what this project uh, tell them is that what you did in this project and how you did it and what is your experience with respect to the tools or the skills are concerned that is what they will look at so at least two projects are required for a fresher or if you are an experienced candidate at least put three projects which should be in a reverse chronological order then comes the technical skills this technical skills are very much important and it should be relevant to the job description what they have given generally freshers will put c c++ java python please don't put like that if you are a vlsa engineer or if you are a fresher looking for vlsa jobs just you can put c and then verilog and if the job description says system verilog then you can put and python for scripting and perl for scripting if you are applying for a designer role these things are less required then you can avoid it and the tools which you are used don't put the tools simply over here for sure in the interview you will be getting questions on that that's why whichever the tool you have used in your academics or while doing the project or during the training period or by own if you learned then only put those tools over here at least one tool is sufficient if you don't know any other multiple tools similarly protocols protocols are very much important in any vlsi domain job that's why at least you should know apb or if you know axi and uart i2c spi those kind of protocol knowledge is much required for a fresher even if you don't know axi that is fine at least learn apb 
and UART and I2C protocols, they are very, very much useful in any VLSI industry. And then verification methodology. If you are a verification guy, you need to specify UVM uh, somewhere in your resume like this. Otherwise, if you don't know UVM, it is very difficult to get into a verification role. That's why verification summer, uh, verification methodology is UVM, which you have used in your in somewhere in your project. That's why you can mention it separately. UVM is not at all a language or a programming language. That's why I have mentioned it verification methodology separately here. And the operating systems what you have used like Linux operating system if you work on Linux platform or in Windows platform uh, better to mention Linux over here why because in the industry especially in VLSI whatever the things are the projects and the tools we use that will be in a Linux platform. Then comes internship. Nowadays internship will be a mandatory thing all the engineering graduates will be undergone one internship at least. You need to put the company name over here and the duration of your internship and then comes what you did in that particular duration. If you take a training over there on some system very log UVM concepts, you need to put it first and then for sure you will be having some project experience over there or a hands on experience, you need to put it over there. So at least two to three lines of your uh, industry experience or internship experience, you need to put it here with the company name clearly. Then come certifications. You should complete at least one or two certifications related to VLSI if you are applying for a VLSI job. In Udemy or Coursera or in any training institute or if you go to NPTEL, you will be getting VLSI related certification courses. You can do them and put it over here. This will give an additional information that you have spent some time on learning the things. Without these, these projects and these internships and these skills you will be not earning at all in your academics. That's why you need to put some certifications over here. At least put two to three certifications. If you have done uh, too many, don't put all those. Again, depending on the job description, you need to put the certifications over here. Three recent certifications are sufficient. If the certificate will be containing the valid period, you can mention it over here. Then comes languages. The first language should be English over here. You can uh, mention it as fluent or write readable like that and then you can put Kannada or your native language then any other language if you know as intermediate you can put it over here and no need to mention the hobbies if it is uh, so important and if you are really into it you can put hobbies or if you are a sportsman you can put that otherwise don't simply put playing cricket listening to music as a hobby that is just reducing the quality of the resume so this much information in a resume for a fresher is much sufficient so if you have an experience, you can put your experience before this education so that you can tell the interviewer or you can tell the HR that I will be having already experience on this particular domain. So this is the sample resume for a fresher. If you are going with VLSI, please keep at least two to three formats since you are applying for design role, verification role or physical domain role as well. If you are going with a design verification role, this resume give you the most of the suitable keywords as well as the projects and uh, the skills how we are supposed to put. If you want this resume format, please ping me in the Instagram. Instagram page link is given in the profile summary of this YouTube channel. Thank you.